Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. This is episode 482 of the Ping Pong Flick Show. I got a few updates for you in terms of DC films. First one being Joker. Congratulations to the sensational Joaquin Phoenix for winning the BAFTA or actually British Academy Film Television Arts for leading actor um also the composer the original score was also uh recognized at this award show joaquin phoenix did accept his reward he even talked a little bit about diversity uh within hollywood and uh, i thought it was a fantastic thing so congratulations to joker continuingly to win awards left and right amazing uh such an amazing thing uh for this uh this movie and the actor and it just goes to show how successful these types of movies can really be uh rather than uh, other you know uh, conveyor belt type movies and you know what i'm talking about but uh also want to go and say that this is Super Bowl weekend. So we did not have any new big Warner Brother projects uh, that have been shown. Um, actually, I was quite surprised to see this little segment um, from Tide. And it is in regards to Wonder Woman 84. It's a very short little teaser it kind of actually reminds me of the carl's jr um you know commercial they did for man of steel but here check it out we won't be doing that today tomorrow tomorrow works Very short. Uh, it's 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 more a joke than anything. And yes, they kind of uh, stuck him right in there. But um, it, it's it's some marketing and and it's with Tide. It's uh, played in front of Super Bowl. Lots and lots of people got to see it. Um, even maybe in fact tweet about it as well. And had a little bit of presence for DC Films over at the Super Bowl, uh, and which is pretty good. And yeah i mean it is a jokey thing i don't see any problem with it it like i said it's just like the carl's jr uh man of steel commercial where superman flies down breaks the thing and the construction workers eating a carl's jr burgers like yeah, that's right i'll take care of it so it's the same kind of thing and uh that's it's great more marketing for wonder woman 1984 as we continue to get closer and closer to this weekend, uh, this coming weekend is Birds of Prey. So once that's out of the way, I'm going to guess that Wonder Woman 1984 marketing is going to ramp up substantially as we get closer and closer to that. Uh, not too much because it's still June 5th, but we'll probably expect to see a little bit more uh, because like what's the, the next biggest thing out of after that would be in July, which is San Diego Comic Con. So they won't have any other opportunity to have those giant, uh, really big pushes in terms of trailers and stuff in, at, at some event, right? So this will be the time right after uh, Birds of Prey get right into Wonder Woman 1984 we're seeing a little bit of piece of that now and that's how it is I like to mention though the music in here is great I hope this is part of that music that's going to be in Wonder Woman 1984 I don't know if Hans Zimmer actually scored this one either but um, I would be excited to, to hear more of that score that soundtrack uh, and so Wonder Woman 1984 is the next DC film coming out the gate after Birds of Prey. Speaking about Birds of Prey, Christina Hodson is the writer of Birds of Prey, also Bumblebee, and also The Flash. And uh, she tells us what a little bit what to expect uh, from the director, Andy Muschietti. She says this, I think Andy's fantastic, Hodson shared with comicbook.com at a press event of Bir for Birds of Prey. 
What I loved about it, the first one in particular, is that he can do scary. He can do big genre stuff, but he can also do real heart. So he can give those characters real emotional depth, and that's something that I would love to see in Flash. And so that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, great to see them talk about Flash in that way. Uh, something that we probably would not have gotten in that Jonathan uh, Goldstein, uh, John Francis Daly and uh, Jonathan Goldstein um, film that they were going to do because they wanted to do a, a kind of a, a a, a fun Back to the Future with comedy and stuff like that. Something that Ezra Miller didn't want to do to have to uh, be a part of. He wanted to get those hum, hum, human, real, emotional death that Christina Hudson is putting in here. And also, if you've seen it, we got some of that too, right? Uh, and alongside that big being uh, scary and uh, dark in, in places. Things, but things that have real stakes. Things that really bring out some type of emotion emotional core other than laughter uh, coming out from your heart and uh, I think Annie Muschietti will be able to uh, deal with that because I wanted to go back to what uh, what he Andy Muschietti had said before uh, and it's this what captivated me about the flash is the human drama in it the human feelings and emotions that play in the drama of it it's going to be fun too I can't promise that there will be any horror element in it really but it's a beautiful human story and so that's what we like to tack on there uh, a, a beautiful a, a making it a human story um, which is something that uh, movies like Man of Steel the Joker did you know it captures it really gets into the drama of the person you're getting drama of the character of the human element a part of that and I think it really makes it uh, have you connect to that character a lot more so um, hoping uh, that's exactly the case what they're trying to do Hudson continues that honestly there's so little I'm allowed to say about Flash I'll tell you that for me the reasons to do it now is because I love it I'm having a blast working on it and that is about an, uh, all I'm allowed to say so continued passion for the project we love these uh, people who who uh, you know pretty admits that they are very passionate about the work that they're going to do and that's all we can ask you is to be completely passionate about it and actually give it your all and it looks like she's going to be doing that so if you want to see a feel of Christina Hudson's work Work, you know go check out Bumby and also go check out Birds of Prey so maybe they'll have some indication of where how she writes her characters and so on and so forth um, there's other films that are coming down the line one of them is indeed Suicide Squad and the uh, the Suicide Squad from James Gunn um, he James Gunn got in a little bit of conversation today in terms of mortality and death uh, one person asked I hope no one dies in Suicide Squad. James Gunn puts that emoji uh, pretty much just revealing there that of course there's going to be some deaths in Suicide Squad. I mean, I think and this is my own theory, is that there's going to be a two teams that go into a mission. The first the, the, the first mission uh, fails. A lot of them die. One of them gets captured. Second team comes up to uh, free that person, uh, that character out. That's my theory my theory alone um, and that's just what I think what might actually happen but uh, in terms of talking about mortality and, and the stakes and death, James Gunn goes a little further. And this is actually in terms of a, in a, a comment from someone who commented about uh, Guards of the Galaxy 3. This person, Sorian Hairbrain or whatever, uh, says, My only comment or request about Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is that you try not to kill any of the leads. There's no good reason for taking out a character. Angst and stress can be generated in a myriad of ways without terminating a beloved character that being said i'm sure i'll love the film obviously that is uh um, kind of a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, it's almost saying like, please make the movie I want, not the make the movie you want. Uh, and it, it is just uh, ridiculous to say that. James Gunn did us uh, reply in a great fashion. He said this, so you don't think any characters in films should die? I can't agree. I think films help us to deal with our own mortality and the mortality of those we love. And seeing that through the lens of story, fable myth is of benefit to people, which I 
wholeheartedly agree. In addition, the death of some characters that makes the survival of others more meaningful. And um, uh, and I, I would agree to that. In fact, James Gunn's um, movies in the Marvel Universe have been probably the only ones that actually deal with death of characters, uh, especially deaths of, that you probably didn't see coming. Um, I like to add like the, the original Groot, the first Groot, which is not the same as the second Groot. The first Groot did indeed die in Guardians Galaxy 1, uh, along with other characters in that movie. Uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Yondu died as well. So that was also of a major character death as well. Uh, he can't promise that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will not have any deaths as well, but it seems like he is not afraid to, to go in that direction. And in the movie called Suicide Squad, you bet there is going to be a lot of deaths in that film. And it just ups the stakes. It shows the mortality. It makes it meaningful. Uh, and it, it just shows you uh, that he cares a lot more about the story than trying to preserve one for sequels or preserve something so that you're happy with it. You know, he's going to make the story that he wants to make. And I think that is uh, pretty good. Now, Jeffrey Robertson, uh, you know, tweeted this out in kind of a response to that um and i think you might see this as interesting guys james gunn is making the same case as Zack snyder did for batman v superman and the death of dc superman so check out this uh this little video uh from Zack snyder on collider i was blindsided uh, in the movie because i had no idea you guys were planning on basically killing superman right when and where did that decision come about and was it something like talk about when you go to the studio and say, oh, by the way, we're thinking about killing your major character? Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to do it really. It was pretty early and and Nolan and I had like a long conversation about it. Really great sort of philosophical conversation about it. And he and he, you know, he was really cool because he really played an amazing devil's advocate about why not to do it. And then in the end was like, no, you're right. It's 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 better. To do it because the version we had a version and that we talked about like where you know he just we're, you know like I, this isn't it but like where he got frozen and shot into space or something you know at the very you know like so he's kind of gone because like one of the things one of the big things I wanted to make sure of was that as we went on to Justice League that Bruce Wayne was the one who was gathering the Justice League I thought it was really important to have Bruce Wayne be the um, samurai who goes and finds the other samurai, right? That to me was important. And with Superman around, it's kind of hard, you know, to just because Superman's Superman, so it's kind of sure. hard for Bruce to kind of like, yeah, I want to put a, I want to put a Justice League together, you know? It's like, okay, but maybe Superman should be doing that, <laughs> you know? You know, you know, I'm you're just a guy. You're a cool guy, don't get me wrong, but you're just a guy. So, I, a, and I thought for his evolution as a character, Superman's character, there's a crucible that he has to to go through, sort of, to really embrace his humanity or find, like, what is it? Like, what is the ultimate thing about being human? What, what the ultimate thing you face is your mortality. And that's a thing that I think is really, you know, cool about this. And yeah, the studio was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, but, the movie's, how about, I call the movie Dawn of Justice. Right. <laughs> you're like, okay, okay. Right. I like what you're doing. But I mean, I it, see what you're doing. But in cool. So um, that's pretty much the gist of that. I mean, it, it really does make sense. Uh, and uh, we he, we've seen him say that before. I mean, how does uh, how would uh, Batman uh, want to? bring up a crew because with the loss and expense of superman he's gone they're gonna need to make up that powerful being to stop another powerful force and he would have to go and collect the other samurai right seven samurai see it's cool um and also he tapped into the mortality of himself which james gunn also tapped into as well and i think uh, these uh, ways of telling these kind of stories they think it even further than just a plot 
that and just think of the, the character and how that character would evolve and, and the arcs that they would have to play. So I think this is great um, for uh, good news, I think, for the Suicide Squad. And um, um, I'm, I'm little, uh, really interested to see what more can come out of that film. But talking about Zack Snyder here a little bit, you know, let's get into more of the Snyder Cut a little bit, right? Because the Snyder Cut is indeed... Um, uh, having a fan event moment right now, but uh, at the same time, we're still learning a little bit more about Justice League as we go along. Pedro Backup Pedro had tweeted a while back. Uh, Zack Snyder confirms that the JL scene where Bruce and Diana discuss creating the Hall of Justice in Wayne Manor is actually his. Uh, in this from Gerson uh, Barrera, he says, Hello, boss. Zack Snyder, does this belong to you? Uh, Bruce, big round table, six chairs. And Diana says, but room for more, uh, in which um, Zack Snyder does say, yes, that does belong to him. Now, I want to suggest a little bit here that it's quite possible, uh, it's quite possible that it, there may have been reshoots of this scene. If you look back at the scene, uh, the lighting is weird, um, and the way his face is, it does look like he is more of a... Uh, you know, that red face version of Bruce than before. So um, it's not, you know, it, it's this, we've heard this before, including the Aquaman bit where Aquaman gets up. They reshot that where he says it a little bit differently than what Zach had put in his trailer, right? About, uh, you know, dressed like a bat. I dig it. He, he put it, a, you know, a little bit more. There was a little bit more added to it. So he reshot it's possible Joss Whedon reshot this exact same scene in a different way. Uh, someone made a video saying that this shot may be Zach's, but the next shot where it shows them, uh, where he shows him coming in and he's smiling, and you know, um, because they wanted to put more happiness and smiling in it, uh, in order to create a different type of scene. But it does, there is the Hall of Justice. Hall of Justice does get created because that that sign does get crumbled in the nightmare future uh, so that actually does happen so there could be some of that as well there's also reason to believe that it's possible just like uh, the part where Z uh, Superman rips his shirt to show his red and blue emblem and he flies up that even though Zack Snyder shot that maybe it's possible like this scene he could have shot it for somebody else he could have shot it for the studio because the studio wants to do certain things he says uh, and they want him to do certain things like that superman shot uh this hall of justice you know kind of shot uh as well there's that possibility as well but i want to maybe bank on saying that there's this he did may possibly create the scene but it would have been different uh it would have been put out different maybe in a different part of the movie perhaps as well uh and then we'll find out when we actually get to see snare cut right so the other thing nosco uh gary he put out he he actually revealed something here he he ran across uh, Sean, who says, I ran across a copy of Justice League Officials Collector's Edition and noticed this image. Release the Snyder Cut Committee was a character to the right of Commissioner Gordon in the movie. This person right here. Um, uh, or is this another thing Justice League ripped away? Or is it deleted regardless? Now, Gary says, Sean here has brought up a great point that I had forgotten. Another actor in the film who may have a larger part in the future is Kobna Holbrook-Smith. He plays Detective Crispus Allen a character who does become the specter in the comments and i kind of mentioned this over in um on the live chat that, that this is eventually that person becomes the specter in it and uh, uh in the comics so you know Zack snyder probably had plans for him or at least introduced that character for something else later on or because he's such a big nerd <laughs> just like all of us he uh, throws all these different characters into seeing it's like an easter egg for most part but it could be worked in later on now Kobna uh did actually reply to this says who can we tweet at about it uh then someone asked so you had more participation in the film uh Kobna really said not really to be honest and there I, there was other uh things that we come across that uh um, that he he also revealed that he he 
he knew about the character turning to Spectre, but he was not promised that role at all. So, uh, like I said, it's probably maybe an Easter egg or a tease, or maybe Zack Snyder had something else in mind towards the future. But uh, that is also an interesting uh, little fact uh, tidbit from uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Continuing on Zack Snyder's Justice League, the fan posters is continuing on, and my god, there has been such creative artists out there who are coming out with so many different renditions and so many different versions of posters and so much stuff. This is probably the first time I've seen an animated an animated version of this, um, so I'm going to reveal to you this right here, so I'm just going to play it right here. So there's actually like four different posters in this thing, I think. Um, but amazing, amazing work here. And uh, I would, <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's almost like almost like it wins pretty much hands down right now for me. But there is such amazing work out there. This is coming from Kel Villarreal. Uh, Nightmare and Hope, a tribute to the story that was not told and hopes to be released. As you see, this is the Nightmare Future, and it, it goes into, um, let's see, guys got the little word here. Okay, it goes into um, uh, the current, the Snyder Cut, because it's got the black suit, um, and then it, it runs, it, it uh, whoops. And then it slowly goes, transitions into him back in the red and blue um, uh, uh, towards the end of this thing. So Justice League, plus the, the music, the effects, the sound, um, a, a crazy. This is a crazy thing. I mean, I could totally see this on a banner in the theater, a, a digital banner, right? Or or a digital header on Facebook or something. Uh, this... Uh, is crazy cool crazy crazy cool and uh probably one of my favorite uh fan posters for this fan events and so i want to you know thank mikhail for doing that i mean that's cool it's so cool so anyway but that fan event is still going on all the way to the february 7th i believe where you can uh, where you can submit your justice league a poster or what you think Zack snyder would do i believe there may be even be like some kind of contest or thing uh to kind of a playful game where you uh who what you think uh you know Zack Snyder would post uh which one which poster do you think he would choose something like that so I I think there's gonna be a little bit more later on um but uh I I thought I'd bring that up as well but RT Snyder Cut has a new event announcement as well this is a big one we are proud to announce that the inaugural Snyder Cut Arts Festival will commence on February 14th inaugural flyer cut arts festival that's crazy you have two weeks to get your snyder cut related art ready for submission on 214 it's a festival i like that uh festival dates uh 214 216 it's the it's a weekend of fun and uh and uh it's gonna be pretty awesome uh that weekend arts festival it's also valentine's day so if you got any significant others you want to go take out <laughs> Festival dates. Okay, I thought I'd zoom in on this so you can see it much more clearly. Festival dates, 214, Sunday, 216, Arts Festival, Release of Snyder Cut. We are proud to host the inaugural Release of Snyder Cut Arts Festival. On Friday, 214, we call for submissions in five main artistic categories. Traditional handmade art, paintings, drawings, crafts, cosplay, photo photography, sculptures, calligraphy, etc., Digital art, Photoshop, 2D, 3D, computer graphics, pixel art, digital collages, 
paintings, models, etc. Music, original music, remixed music, cover music, songs with lyrics, instrumentals, melodies, etc. Video, fan trailers, edits, music videos, personal musings, video dedications, etc. Literature, short stories, poems, haikus, open letters, personal thoughts, etc. Tag all submissions with hashtag releases snare cut and include the text RTSC Arts Festival. Five finalists from each category will be selected by a panel who will also take the number of likes, retweets on Twitter into consideration. The 25 final submissions will be judged by Zach Snyder. He will select one winner from each category plus one overall Arts Festival Award winner. Submissions will be on Friday 214 during a short two-hour window with winners announced on Sunday 216. 16. Okay, the winner in each category will win one of five Zack Snyder statues created and generously donated by Maximilian Platten at the Voltage AD. Uh, the overall Arts Festival Award winner will win a unique piece of Justice League art from Zack Snyder himself. Now, there's a little asterisk here. Uh, the first two minutes of music and video submissions will be considered during the finalist selection process. The five finalists will be judged on their entire submissions in uh, but keep length reasonable. Literature should be kept to under 300 words. Uh, and also, I've been told uh, that that literary art, uh, that literary work, you could just uh, screen capture on it. You don't have to submit a document. You just uh, screen cap of uh, that art are uh, that that piece of literature and, and send it that way so I'm guessing it probably have to be like uh, a few uh, a page or so right um, also there was a little bit more added let me see if I can grab that up okay there was another uh, piece here further details we are proud to have this event support Lena's powerful art charity drive to raise funds for art supplies for poor children in Colombia to unlock Zack Snyder's personal prize we need to come together as a community and raise $1,000 for these disadvantaged children. We can do it. By the way, I wanted to uh, say this, that I'm talking about this uh, a day after they've raised over $1,000 for the charity. So congratulations. That has already been done. Uh, it didn't take long. It has already been done. It's like uh, last time we saw it was like $1,300. So congratulations. Uh, thank you to all who uh, were able to uh, you know, donate to that charity. The judges selecting the 25 finalists are Lena, Max, Adrian, and Ramesh. But you have a say too. Make sure to campaign for your favorite pieces of art. Submissions with the most likes and retweets will be considered favorably tag all submissions with release snare cut include the text rtsc uh arts festival so here's the dates here's the times where you have to turn in that art okay all submissions must be entered within the following two hour period on fair and friday at 214 i understand that may be a little bit difficult but try your best so make sure you are aware when the submission period is for you Get your submissions in and start liking, retweeting, and even quote tweeting all your favorites. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is all on Friday, 214. Okay, all on Friday, 214. Uh, from uh, Pacific Standard Time, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, UK, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, CET, I'm not sure what they mean, but uh, it's 5 to 7 p.m. India, 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. China, 12 to 2 a.m. Uh, so I understand it sometimes it may be difficult to do this, but if you want to, you know, um, upload that tweet uh, like how we've done uh, for the Snyder Cut events where, you you know, you kind of just program it a little bit, you know, uh, do that as well. You can, uh, you can use those uh, programs that can do that. Um, so that way, you don't if you're not awake at that time or you have to be at work at that time, uh, 
you can upload it early and schedule it uh, to tweet out at that certain time, right? Zack Snyder will announce winning submissions on Sunday 216. So I'm, I'm thinking uh, it's going to be a pretty damn wonderful weekend uh, on Friday, uh, starting with Friday 214, where he, he chooses the, uh, the Justice League fan poster. He will also, um, uh, we will also probably get our shirts during that time as well, and also this event as well. It's it's starting to come pretty a big, almost like a celebratory. It's almost like a, a fan event to come together to celebrate Zack Snyder's Justice League in a way. Um, so I'm not promising anything pretty, you know, going to happen on 214 just that these events are ending at that time and prizes will be given and that will be the time Zack Snyder will be interacting with us once again uh, unless he interacts with us uh, tomorrow <laughs> but in any case uh, 214 this month is going to be very interesting that weekend is going to be very interesting uh, and and it's going to be an awesome awesome weekend uh, indeed it's it's the Snyder Cut Arts Festival that's crazy right Look, look how far we've come. Uh, interesting stuff. We we support Zack Snyder crew on their art, and now they're kind of turning around and supporting artistic talent within the fan community. And everybody I know, everybody has a little bit of art in them to give, a little bit of art in them to provide. And now here's your chance. You don't have to be an artist. You can be a writer. You can talk on a mic like this. Uh, you can make a trailer. You can make a video. Uh, there's so many different uh, pieces of art that you can submit. This could be your chance to show Zack Snyder the kind of stuff that you like to make. So, and anyway, this is awesome. This is a great uh, event indeed. I'm pretty excited about it. Am I going to turn in anything else? I don't know yet. Not sure. Uh, but uh, I am very, very excited to see the talented fan committee come up and start busting out more stuff just like the the incredible stuff that you guys have done for the Justice League fan posters. There's so much freaking artists in this community and I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see fan trailers. I can't wait to see fan uh, music videos. I can't wait to see all that kind of stuff. I can't wait to see more fan posters. If, if you know, it's just amazing stuff and it really does kind of uh, get people excited for Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's, it's, this is kind of our thing of trying to figure out what that movie is and, and how that movie will feel and, and just a celebration of for Zack Snyder's Justice League, a celebration for release of Snyder Cut movement. Uh, and I think we're getting just getting closer and closer and closer um, to the eventual uh, announcement for the Snyder Cut. All right, guys. Well, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and release the Snyder Cut.